We supply thousands of LEDs every month and one of the most common questions we're asked is how do I choose resistors to go with my LEDs? And this is very important because LEDs need to operate within certain voltage and current limits otherwise they won't work properly and may be damaged. Here are a few examples of the LEDs that I use and that we supply from our online shop. They range between 3mm and 10mm in diameter and have either clear or diffused lenses. The lenses can also be coloured diffused or white when off and coloured when on. In this video, I'm going to look at how to set up LEDs with suitable current limiting resistors. For choosing resistors, I'll just do one simple calculation without a lot of maths or theory and I'll also look at how to measure the current and voltage in an LED circuit. To get started, let's look at what LEDs need to power them up. Most LEDs that are used in electronics have similar requirements. They all need a voltage which is measured across them and a current which goes through them. When you buy and use LEDs, always look to see if the seller has offered some guidance or specifications on voltage and current. If they haven't, there are some common values you can start with to make sure you don't overload them. Here's an LED from our stock. It's red with a 10mm diffused coloured lens and the recommendation is between 1.8 and 2.2 volts across the LED and 20 milliamps through the LED. That's 20 thousandths of an amp, a very small current. The long wire is the positive side or anode and the short wire is the negative side or cathode. Some LEDs also have a flattened area at the base of the bulb to indicate the cathode, but I don't think you can always rely on this. I've seen some where this is reversed and the flat section is on the positive side. If you've already cut off the leads and are wondering which way to turn it, look inside. The large part of the diode is the cathode and the small section is the anode. Another way of testing is simply to put a small voltage across the LED leads, maybe with a coin cell, and then you can see which polarity lights it up. I want to wire this LED into a circuit and need to make sure it has about 2 volts across it. Firstly, I need to find out the voltage of the supply. This could be a battery to make a simple light, or it could be a pin of a chip to light up the LED when triggered by logic, maybe to show a high temperature or something like that. Starting with the battery and light idea, I'll choose a 9 volt battery. 9 volts just connected to the LED would overwhelm it. It would burn very brightly and then be ruined. I need to lose some voltage using a resistor, and so from the 9 volts, 2 will be across the LED and 7 will be across the resistor. I know that the LED is designed to work with 20 milliamps flowing through it and the simple calculation to find the resistance is to divide the voltage across it by the current through it measured in amps. Sliding across the decimal points, 20 milliamps is 0.02 amps. Dividing 7 by 0.02 gives me 350 for the resistance. There isn't a 350 ohm resistor available, so I'll go for the nearest one which is 330 ohms or 330R. It doesn't matter that it's slightly lower because the LED should be able to take a slightly higher current. Let's put that together on a breadboard. Here's a 9 volt battery connected to the power rails. Then a 330 ohm resistor connected to the positive rail and the LED completes the circuit with its anode joining up with a resistor and its cathode connected to the negative or ground side of the power. It looks good, lights up well and there don't seem to be any problems. Let's take a look now at how to measure the current and voltage to check if this is all OK. To measure the voltage across the LED, I'll firstly set the range of a multimeter for direct current up to 20 volts. Using some crocodile clips, I'll connect it across the LED wires and now we can see the actual voltage. That's good and in the range expected. I want to measure the current going through the LED rather than across it, so I need to interrupt the circuit connect the ground lead of the multimeter to ground and the live lead to the LED. This meter is set to milliamps and here with the real circuit we can see that once again we're in the right range. If you want to fine tune some LEDs to make sure they all have the same current or if you have one for which you're not sure of the voltage needed you can use a trimmer potentiometer to adjust the resistance until you get the current you want. Here I have a 500 ohm trimmer connected in place of the resistor. As I adjust the resistance, current and voltage are changing on the meters. 
So when I hit 20 milliamps, I can see what the voltage across the LED is. When I disconnect the trimmer, I can measure its resistance, so now I know which components I need to keep the current limited. Now that I've looked at how to calculate resistors, let's try another example. Here's a blue clear 5mm LED. The specifications say 3 volts to 3.2 volts at 20 milliamps. This time I'm going to power it from a digital output from an Arduino board. The high voltage of the pin when triggered is 5 volts, so I need to lose around 2 volts. The calculation for the resistor will be 2 volts divided by 0.02 amps, which comes out at 100 ohms. That's a common size for a resistor, so I can easily add one. And here it is, once again everything looking good, with the measurements in the correct range. LEDs like this are small components. They're best used with power supplies that are well controlled and somewhere near the correct voltage to start with. In other videos, I'll take a look at how to wire LEDs in series and in parallel, and how to take care of them and reduce risk from using them by having suitably regulated power. Before I finish though, here are a few tips about using LEDs. Component LEDs are generally very reliable, consistently well-made components. It's very unusual for them to be faulty, so if they don't seem to be working for you, check the specifications and then check and double check your circuit and power supply to make sure you're not over or under supplying them with current. Almost all small LEDs are designed to work happily at around 20 milliamps. Red and yellow ones usually operate around 2 volts and blue and white usually around 3 volts. Green can be somewhere around either and can catch you out. So with all LEDs you're not sure about, it's best to do some measurements with a meter or two. It's also a good idea to check LEDs before you solder them into a circuit. A quick touch with a coin cell across the leads will let you know that they're working. As ever, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll be back soon with more videos about LEDs and other topics, so if you enjoyed this one please subscribe to our channel, give this video a like and ring the bell icon to find out when the next one is coming along. Thanks for watching.